<laughs> since I was coughing through so much. I know, this is all Cam. And this is not a spring chick. And today we're going to be talking about... The uh, ever-dwindling trade show. I mean, they're just shrinking like you would not believe. I mean, when we started out, there was armies of trade shows you could go to, and they were uh, basically press from all areas were welcome. Today, they're restricting everything like you would not believe. I mean... Well, we've seen this. This is not the first time. I mean, first of all, trade shows have been hit by a number of things. One is people just have less money. Yeah. It has to do with companies also. And so companies are looking at ways to cut back. But part of it is, you know, we've spoken with some of those companies, and they're just like, my gosh, it's like we have to be at this trade show, but it's like... Nobody's... nobody's but people going. aren't going as much. Um, the, you know, and we've heard from some of the other people, it's like the people, our main consumers that are going to buy, are still going to buy whether we whether we're here at the trade show. Yeah. And so they're looking at this huge expense for the floor space, the trade show booth, as well as personnel. Yeah. And they're wondering, it's like, do we even need to be there? No, because the problem with the internet is the internet uh, gives you a virtual showroom all the time. And uh, as, I mean, okay, we were at the food show and we were, I think, over at the Coke booth where they were showing mm -hmm. all the new means of stuff that they have. Because you get all kinds of really great tea and all kinds of other stuff out of the equipment. And the, um, the guy, you know, the, it was, I think it was a guy from In-N-Out Burger. Mm -hmm. And he, he simply said, you know, that they said, well, would you like a demonstration? And he said, no, I'm just here as a courtesy. If you come to me, I don't go to you. Mm -hmm. And that's how it is. The, all of these companies will go to the, to the people. So, you know, that's what they have a sales force to. They'll call them up on a the telephone, they'll make appointments, they'll send you samples. The trade show basically is sort of like the dinosaur in our country. Out of this country, they're really massive. They're getting bigger. Well, one of the, th the great parts about the trade show is people collectively get together. They meet other people in the industry. And that's why, actually, that's one of the reasons why they always have seminars surrounding them. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, part of it is, is they get to network. and. A lot of times they create relationships and synergies that they would not have come across oh, it's because a, they're not there. a big networking thing. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like, um, um, it, it, but the problem comes is that we have seen the auto shows getting smaller, the home improvement show is getting smaller, the health fair is getting smaller, everything is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And here's the trick is as they get, as they shrink in size, they keep restricting themselves more and more what people can come in. They, they narrow their focus until they narrow themselves out of existence. Well, we've seen that with some of the other trade shows where um, we, we don't need to name the organization um, because we've seen this across the board where they get more restrictive as to the press that can come. What happens is as the trade shows get more restrictive to the press that will come, fewer press come anyway. I mean, well, actually, fewer press are going to come anyway because they're of tighter budgets, yeah, the, right? Yeah. Then fewer press come because they're more restrictive on as to who can come. Because I know one of the one of the organizations has got awful restricted. You got to have a down. You got to have a to go in. Besides your badge to get in, you have to have a photo ID and your business card or uh, or uh, inventory slip showing that you're in the business to get into the event. That basically was a it was a huge event and it's been downsizing every year since we've been going. They've been getting smaller and smaller, and uh, you know once it was all over the city of Las Vegas and now it's restricted to one, uh, one area now, mm -hmm. and uh, and they're restricting it even further, which is which is sort of ridiculous because uh, well here's the thing is that as the people that are putting the show on are being more restrictive. The people that are actually putting the money into the show are becoming less restrictive because they want more people. So they discovered a way that you can bypass the people running the show. Mm -hmm. You know, for two for a day and a half, you can get in if you buy a ticket. Mm -hmm. You know, from them, you become a member of their group. You know, it's the consumer side, and you can come into the show, and you don't have to be a member of the industry. Because we also know that for like the last three years, they've been selling tickets to. Uh, to press events, you know, you know, uh, you know, which basically screws up the press. You can't. You got so much well, noise in the room, you can't do interviews. Here's here's part of it is is when you have a press event and you sell tickets so that anybody can come into the press event. Everybody does. Everybody does, and so for the the companies that are there, 
they don't know who to believe. They don't know if you're actually pressed or not pressed. And so they cut back as to who they even want to talk to. Yeah. Right? Because they, you know, they, they give you, who the hell are you? Um, that, that, I always hate that response. Who the hell are you? Well, we're the guy that's not going to do the interview with you. That's who we are. But um, uh, it, though, it's just, you know, the part of it is I remember last year, I mean, I know some of the security people there, and one of the security guards told me at one of the events, well, we were expecting 5,000 in the press, and we got like 1,700. Mm -hmm. And they had all of, remember, all of the, the stuff, all the badges, all of the this and that, and nobody came. And then what happened was everybody came, but instead of coming with threes and fours, they came with one. Yeah. Are they picked up like a um, great show where they, they sent an editor from the publication, and she'd never been to a trade show in her life. And she, they, she counted on picking up a film crew while she was there to do her filming. And people oh, are, are you serious? Yeah, I'm sitting in there in the press room and, you know, she said, do you know anybody that I can hire in the city? And they said, no, they're all hired. They're working. They're already. working. She said, well, nobody told me I couldn't find anybody to work here. Well, yeah. You because, should have made those arrangements beforehand. But she didn't know she was coming. Um, we know people that basically live and die off of covering these events that are no longer going. They're covering them by, um, you know, okay, the, uh, okay, when I was younger, they used to do recreation. I mean, I, really, they didn't really have the national networks like they do now, so they do, they do recreations of baseball games. Ronald Reagan, for instance, did recreations of the Chicago Cubs games. Well, okay, here's part of it is they're streaming it live. Yeah, so you pick okay. it up. So if, let's just say Sony decided to stream it live, Okay, and you're not there. Well, first of all, if they're streaming it live, what do you even need to go there for? You can just sit, sit at home and watch it. Right. And then, so unless you're going there for the networking or just put your hands on stuff and talk to the people, you know, you don't need to be there. But you know, the same could be said like, why go to the Super Bowl if you can watch the Super Bowl from home? Well, you go to the Super Bowl because. Because it's, it, it's the event. It goes on around it. It's the, it's the reason why. Okay. Um, you can't pick up. Okay. You can sit there at your desk and pick up the information you need from press releases and watching it on, on YouTube being brought to you live. But you can't pick up the things that, you know, you walk around to people that you know and ask them how things are. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I mean, I used to, one of the people, one of the guys that I know there basically ran one of the larger. You know, basically, they're a big company, but they specialize in all these little junky things you find for Christmas and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and then like three years ago, I asked him how things are going, and he said, well, they're going bad. But they said, that, you know, as that, you know, that you, you, you're all right as long as you're, that at least you're giving out Titanjaroga pencils, because they only cost a penny a piece. If you give out 10,000 of them, God, how much are you giving out? So um, last year, you know, I went by and they got they downsized their booth for three straight years. This year was just like last time at the show. There was just uh, you know a little tiny table out mm -hmm. there. None of the just this products under under a glass thing. And I asked him, said we're not even giving pencils away this year because nobody has any damn money. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. They think there's a product a problem with their products, not that the fact that no one has any money. You mean you see here's one of the things is when I first saw on the internet that Target was selling with Sony. I thought, oh my gosh, that is crazy. And then, and then they priced it out, and then the servers crashed because they had too many people requesting it. And I thought, you know, if the product's right, people will crash your website, right? Yeah, but, to get there. But the problem was it was never a legitimate sell. There was a PR thing that got out of control. You know, because they didn't have $3,000 dresses for $20. They didn't have $600 patio sets. For ten, for I think it was two ninety nine. None of that existed, which is why they're being sued now. They they couldn't deliver what they didn't have, but it hurt Masoni badly. So uh, oh, it you know, did hurt Masoni. Oh yeah, it hurt him. Give a bad reputation for getting connected with that stuff. It, it hurt. It hurt Target. I mean, it was a okay. It was a PR. It was a PR stunt that went bad. It was never well, they, supposed to happen like that. Well, see, part of it is they've had designers that will do special collections yeah. for them, which they're known for. And so, you know, here's part of me. I thought, well, you know, maybe they hit it just right because everybody's running out there. 
Well, it sounds like that's more like the exception to the rule. Okay, but what it was was how you can't sue them is the fact that it's the same thing that grocery stores will use on holidays. You know, we have one, you know, one spiral ham at 79 cents a pound. Well, you'd think that's one per customer. No, as we found out from one of the store managers, it is one per store. Mm -hmm. Unless it says one per customer specifically, it means we have one. Yeah, so I mean, they may have more than that, but they minimally have one to meet the requirements. Yeah, but, uh, but it's the same thing with the Moscone. They had one. Moscone. The Moscone, they had one. They had enough to be legal. But they didn't think that that would, well, what are you going to sell a $3,000 dress for $30? you got to have a lot of women want the $3,000 dress. Well, they're, they're massaging for Target. Yeah, but uh, it, 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 it basically what it did, it killed the brand for the company because nobody would trust a company you can't get delivery on now. But, um, but it, it's... I did see somebody with a pair of Missoni slippers. Yeah. She said, my friend got this. I'm like, yeah, how'd you get those? She said, they got them for me from Target. Yeah, if you were lucky and you got there at the beginning, but then the, the scrubbers crashed, they're not making, uh, I understand, not making deliveries. But um, the, it's just, everybody is trying to do a new business model in order to try to survive. I mean, it's, um, uh, okay, the, when markets go up, when markets should be going down, you know, there's a, something is wrong with them. Like I said, the trade shows, though, I mean, we have seen one trade show after another shrinking itself almost totally out of Houston. We've been to car we've shows. we've seen some of them combined to, together. Oh, yeah, there are two or three going together now to survive. But, I mean, we, we just attended a car show that used to occupy the entire convention center and, and the basement area mm -hmm. that basically now is occupying one quarter of, a, of one one area, one quarter of an area, and the others. So, um, expect that, you know, like the things that used to be outside are now all in the building to fill up the building because nobody's buying the autos anymore. If you're not buying the audio autos, you have to believe the general mo the uh, the the uh, Chevy thing we saw. Oh my gosh! Is GM and Chevy okay? First of all, we've covered a lot of different <laughs> auto shows. But you know, I swear it was just like an empty hall with what a little kiosk that was smaller than this kitchen counter. Yeah, this was their kiosk where they had their material. It was smaller than this. They had their material there, and the cars were just placed on the floor. There was no, you know, they usually have these huge signs. And they tell you about the new products that are coming out, and no, we couldn't even find some of the products that they were talking about. You know. We had to be looking all over the place. Uh, okay, where is this car? You know, we're going over. And then, you know, we looked all over the place. It, it made like three trips around, which didn't take us a long time. Three trips, we finally found a car, mm -hmm. a GM car that they're selling. A, the Chevy Volt, basically, it's a, you know, they, they basically, it was just stuck in a corner. Nobody cares about the Volt. But they were pushing the other one, is their hot new car. And it was only A, and it didn't have a price on it. Yeah. But that's what they're coming to. We've been to, um, Music shows would basically, um, if, if you were breathing, you could get in because everybody, they're what, they don't care who they sell their instruments to as long. Okay, you don't go to a music trade show unless you want music. It's not instruments. Well, yeah, I mean, part of it, yeah, that's why you So go. the people that come in, but I mean, like, uh, we can tell you last year, we were, we were invited to a press conference and we got there. They told us we couldn't come because we couldn't get in the building. You know, because they banned the press at that show, totally. You know, unless you're a member of the music industry press, which basically is not, they don't cover the show because well, there's no need to cover it. Here's part of it. If you're part of the industry specifically and that's all you focus on, you're going to cover it anyway. Yeah, but you don't even, you're going to, they're just going to send you the information. You don't have to go because there's no stars coming anymore. Mm -hmm. It's just we're getting ready to do another trade show. And I'm looking at the celebrity, uh, you know, you know, like uh, seven days of people I've never heard of. I mean, I'm, I'm checking records. Well, she was a Hooters. She was Miss Hooters of Nashville, Tennessee. Well, who the hell so? did that? Or, you know, uh, he did a piece of artwork 20 years ago for Ronald Reagan. Um, yeah, that doesn't get you too I mean, that is not going to go. I mean, we're talking, they used to have major performers. I can remember... Um, <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm filming an automobile, and um, 
And um, William James Elliott, he's their big tall guy from JAG and stuff, he asked me, hey, could you, could you shine that light underneath the car? And he gets down on his back and he's crawling underneath the automobile looking at it. Oh, damn, look at these mufflers. Because he wanted those mufflers, you know, and he's trying to see if you could actually put them on the car, you know. But this is what you get. You get the star power that would come in because there was star power at the events. Mm -hmm. Today, basically, all of that's gone. They don't have any money anymore. I mean, you can't even go, okay, we're, uh, one, we're, we're picking, we got two shows coming up in a row that we're making certain we got at least a microwave refrigerator in the room because we don't have any food in, in the evening. We used to have parties. Yeah, we used to have, yeah, there used to be tons of parties to go to so you never had to worry about food. Yeah, we can tell you that, you know, uh, major automobile companies no longer, I mean, you used to count on, on their part, uh, on their events at trade shows. You know, where they're putting the auto shows, they're doing all of these trade shows. You pelt on the Toyota, the, uh, you know, this part, you know, the Ford, the Chevy, the Honda. Honda parties used to be legends, folks. Yeah. And, uh, and the Toyota parties. Toyota parties. And, uh, you know, and, you know, and there, there's no food anymore. I mean, it's just like great big empty vacuums where these people used to be because they're, they're not selling the cars like they need to sell. And they've decided to cut back on advertising budget. And that's where a lot of trade shows come from, from their advertising budget. You can basically find a better use of your advertising dollar than going to a trade show today. Well, that's one of the reasons they're probably doing it. Yeah. Because, uh, okay. And then here's another trip. How do you know a trade show is going to really be bad? Is if it's a Monday, you, 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 if it's a Sunday and Monday show, basically people come in on Sunday and they leave. If it's a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday show, they come in on Sunday and they're gone on Monday. They go, they go, they ship, they basically stay one night in a hotel, the cheap night, and the next day they come by to see if anything was going and they're at the airport. You know, I think there's, there's twofold because, see, part of it is we've heard it from the exhibitor sides before. Where they're like, because especially we go into Vegas, right, several yeah. times a year, and they basically said the companies are gouging us. Yeah. Right. It's they're too gouging much. us on the lodging. They're gouging us on well, actually the lodging. Yeah. Um, food. Food. Everything. It's just like it's just getting too expensive for us to come, and they're trying to sit there and justify it. Well, we, we know we have been to. Uh, I was watching a thing. Other guy said, you know, well, I don't go to. I don't go to this chain. This this chain burger store because. It's going to cost me as much as if I go to this burger store, mm -hmm. and these are better burgers to begin with because when conventions come to town, they have this nasty little habit, the prices all go up. Isn't that something? Yeah. It can cost you more the, 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 the day of a convention than the day before the convention for a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And that's, that it pisses people off. They want, I mean, actually, it's a big blow to Las Vegas, but they want a lot of these conventions out of Vegas in the communities oh, really? where they are more friendly. Why Vegas works is because...